So, Jordan Peterson. He blows. Clean up your room. He's weird. He's a weirdo. He thinks weird. He thinks bad from brain damage, from Russian-induced steak coma. Hey, well, if you want to organize your psyche, you could start by organizing okay. your room. Can you even clean up your own room? No. What? Jordan D. Peterson here. Jordan D. Peterson here. What if cleaning your room was more important than the Mali Civil War? Inside of you is a lobster. You have to boil it until it is tender. Jordan Peterson is a Canadian professor, transphobe, philosopher's apprentice, right-wing mouthpiece, Joe Rogan experience, ultimate ability, and today we are going to be taking a look at his YouTube shorts. Hey girlies, welcome back to the Tower of Babel. I'm the only other person who speaks the same language as you, and I hold questionable opinions about the poor. We should make them race on all fours if they can't pay utilities. Impoverished Olympics, who's with me? They can all compete for an entry-level managerial position at Kroger's. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I know in today's attention economy, you could have watched the porn equivalent of Decalogue or a Mr. Beast video that would befuddle Mansa Musa in terms of display of opulence. So thanks so much for coming to your local small channel. We remember our customers here. Like you, your name is, uh, you're, uh, and as a special deal, if you subscribe right now, I'll start mailing white powder to protected officials. So get on that and click the bell, the like button, go to YouTube and search Ro Ramden, well liked and endowed to influence the recommended searches. Okay, so before we get going looking at the YouTube shorts, we're gonna do an obligatory Jordan Peterson roast. Jordan Peterson, you know him, he's the guy your ex-boyfriend mentioned in passing before putting on the Joe Rogan episode that would end your relationship. Jordan B. Peterson, the internet's adjunct absentee father. Guinness World Record holder of man who acts the most divorced. I think I speak for all of us when I say, where's the alimony, Jordan? Your kids want to go to Six Flags. He looks like a ghostly apparition, like he turned to sand in a light breeze. When people talk about civil war ghosts appearing on Antietam cobblestone roads, uh, this is what they look like. His facade is equivalent to that of an 1800 soldier who died by musket fire and was trampled by pack mules. He dresses like a fantasy tonic vendor, like the manager of a renaissance fair who mandates metrosexuality. I'm pretty sure every morning he wakes up and the suits meld onto his body like he's Iron Man or animals dress him like he's Cinderella. Just the racist animals though. Like we know woodpeckers believe in IQ and skull science. In another life, he's a soft-spoken audio engineer for the Lumineers or an adult herpetologist. But in this world, he has to be the mother Teresa of 4chan perverts. He looks like he's allergic to the sun. Like life has not been kind to him, but the devil has. His body looks old, but his eyes look like they've genuinely seen nothing. You could show this guy a Rubik's Cube and he'd freak out. I just know he doesn't play about bug spray. I know he tears up looking at Excel, the horrors of modern life. R.L. Stein created this guy as a cautionary tale. He's got the face of a man who's never peeled a potato. Zero manual labor. If you gave him a rake, he would start sneezing. I see him and I think, is that a malnourished Slovenian folk artist or a patient in a commercial for beta blockers? All right, let's head over to the React Chamber so that we can see some of these Jordan Peterson videos. Welcome to the React Chamber, a hermetically sealed bunker that will contain every molecule of Jordan Peterson content that we watch during this video. Let's get to it. Now, a cool tidbit about the React Bunker is that it's also actually my room. And as you can see, it's pretty clean. That's so Jordan can't use that as a point against me. As many of you know, one of Jordan's favorite things to say is that before you criticize other people, you should clean your own room, get your own life in order. So now that I've got that covered, let's see what you'll do about it, boredom P. fuckerson. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. It's, his name is Jordan. I'm sorry. This first video is called Fatherlessness is Destroying America, which bold claim, Mr. Peterson. This guy hasn't heard of inflation or lobbying or systemic racism or incarceration or the justice system or Congress or white supremacy or patriarchy. Or Girls who don't have a father will hit puberty on average at least a year earlier, which is substantially earlier. And that indicates a real biological impact of the lack of a masculine figure in the household. That's a walloping, physiological difference. I know Jordan must have nightmares about the sentence that I'm about to say, but I think I found the study that he's talking about, and I want to read to you the conclusion. Conclusion, among girls from higher income but not lower income families, father absence is linked to earlier puberty. This was partially true for
for African Americans in terms of pubic hair development. These effects are not explained by body weight. Future research is needed to identify social and biophysiological mechanisms through which father absence, ethnicity, and income impact puberty onset. Okay, do we understand how different that is than the static thing he is saying without factoring anything in? It's like he ran the whole study through a context colander, and now we're just left with a few loose words. I'd like to say that when he does this type of thing, um, that's a lie. <laughs> he's lying. I'm not sure why he's so into stripping things of detail and circumstance, but good lord, man. ...who have lack of father at the age of 12 have telomeres, uh, so this is a genetic difference, that are on average something approximating 15% shorter, which means that all other things being equal, they're already doomed to a much shorter life. And so we don't know what the pervasive multi-generational consequences of the breakdown in familial structure in the final analysis are. Yeah, so let's look at this paper, okay? Father loss and child telomeres. Results, at nine years of age, children with father loss have significantly shorter telomeres, 14% reduction. Paternal death has a larger to Association, 16%, followed by incarceration, 10%, and separation and or divorce, 6%. Changes in income partially mediate these associations, 95% mediation for separation and or divorce, 30% for incarceration, and 25% for death. Conclusions, father loss is a significant association with children's STL, with the death of a father showing the largest effect. Income loss explains most of the association between child STL and separation and or divorce, but much less of the association with incarceration or death. This underscores the important role of fathers in the care and development of children, and supplements evidence of the strong negative effects of parental incarceration. So first of all, death and incarceration just destroy divorce in this debate in terms of shortening telomeres or whatever. Death of the father and incarceration are the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to divorce his air bud. Plus, my dad died when I was seven because he was allowed to, and I just checked my telomeres this morning in the mirror. Perfectly normal length, perhaps even longer, stronger, and about the thickness of cable car wire. I don't know what telomeres are. <laughs> but really, Jordan Peterson with the remarkably hot take that kids don't like it when their dads die. <laughs> I could have told you that. After my dad died, I got like 75% less Thomas the Tank Engine toys. From that point on, my mom just got me like Legos and grief workbooks and Lego grief workbooks. Additionally, income loss explains most of the association with divorce. Check and mate, Jordan Peterson. Pull up your wide underwear with hearts on them and go back to the doghouse you sleep in every night, you fucking Looney Tunes ghoul. So what is he doing here, right? Why is he saying these things that aren't fully true? To me, it seems like he's arguing for the importance of a strong man in the household and most likely for the relevance of the nuclear family. So for conservatives, the nuclear family is important and heteronormativity is important. They want men and women to have children and for that model to be the best. So it is ideologically convenient for Jordan Peterson to stretch the truth here, to say things that aren't super true, as though he can form a scientific basis for the necessity of the father in the family model. It also acts as a convenient opportunity to say, strong men belong in the household, that if men are not in the household, there are problems. Now, if this is part of a larger video where he explains different things, perhaps he's speaking out against parental incarceration, that's totally fine. But considering that this is clipped out of context in a short form uh, medium and then given to people as though it's a full analysis or piece of information on the situation, that means that people can come to their own conclusions about this. And that's not to say that telomere shortening isn't good. My telomeres are probably shorter because my father passed away when I was young. And according to the National Institute of Health, accelerated telomere shortening is associated with early onset of many age-associated health problems, including coronary heart disease, heart failure, diabetes, increased cancer risk, and osteoporosis. But to people who see this clip, and maybe Jordan Peterson himself, he can say, telomeres are shorter in people who don't have fathers, ergo, if no father increases the biological likelihood of death, he can present it as a pernicious lurking evil slowly destroying the world in America. In reality, the truth is much more mundane. It is likely that losing a father or your father being incarcerated is a massively stressful, life-changing event for most people, as is the economic instability caused by divorce. To say that, though, is a much less interesting statement than saying, fatherlessness is destroying America. I'll give it to him, though. He's a great copywriter for conservative ideology. Fatherlessness is destroying America? <laughs> Put that on the Goodyear blimp and everybody's gonna be saying it for years. This is one of the things that distinguished communism from Nazism, let's say, and made it even maybe more pernicious. The Nazis basically said, the world, that's for the Aryans, and the rest of you can go to hell and we'll be happy to aid in the flames, let's say. There's not a unit. 
No. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm not going to say that the bad guys didn't say that off rip. What are you talking about? You think Hitler won elections by telling people he would send them to hell? I mean, just like give the Wikipedia page a a small skim. He tried to appeal to left wing sentiments and then purge them from the party later. They used anti communism, anti Semitism, and nationalism to form a common enemy of the people and took advantage of the economic downturn in the late 1920s. Check this one out. Business leaders, fearful of a communist takeover, began supporting the bad guys party. Business leaders literally supported the bad guys instead of communists. The opposition to the The communists were opposing those guys. And it's pretty bloody obvious. On the communist front, though, and this is maybe what made it such a powerful substitute in some sense for, for Christianity, there was the notion that what we were working for was the universal brotherhood of man and this intense inclusiveness where everyone could live together peacefully. And so people were also led down the garden path by that presumption and found out that lying in the service of future utopia turns out to be a pathway to hell, just like lying in the service of an exclusionary fascist state. He lost me right there. I presume he's talking about the Soviet Union. They're not theoretical communism. I can't blame him. The guy doesn't know much about communism. He thinks postmodern neo-Marxists are a thing, so... But, I, you know, I love this guy. He says things that sound like history. You know, they've got the general shape of a fact, kind of the colorblindness test of information. Some people hold a dialectical view of history or a materialist view of history. Jordan Peterson holds a gist view of history. Sparks notes, bullet points. He's using content-aware fill to work the rest out. Also, how is using racism the same as using the promise of improving life for all people? At least the people who are saying that they're going to improve life for all people aren't recruiting the the racist, right? That's got to count for something. 10 points? Can we please get 10 points? Oh, 10 points for the communists. You know what, Dave? They've been up against the fascist defense all night, and I've been saying if they get those points in, they're going to be able to clutch out a victory. I don't see the other guys coming back from this one. Wait, wait. McCarthy's at the 30. McCarthy's at the 20. When I studied antisocial behavior, in, uh, particularly at McGill, I studied female and male antisocial behavior. Male <laughs> antisocial behavior tends to be much more physically violent. Mm -hmm. And so most of the people who are imprisoned are male, mostly because we imprison violent offenders, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. We don't necessarily imprison white collar criminals, even if they defraud like 60,000 people. but. You know, a mugger, well, we're going to lock him up. And yeah, mm -hmm. I can understand that, although you know, not entirely. Defrauding 60,000 people out of their pension isn't exactly nothing either. But in any case, it's almost all men in prison and it's almost all violent offenders. What's the female equivalent of antisocial personality? And it's much more subtle. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is reputation destruction and exclusion. Mean girl syndrome. Did you know that when girls are mean, it's with words and boys are mean with guns? <laughs> I'll take things everybody knows for 200, Alex. What is patriarchy, toxic masculinity, and the legacy of gendered violence? I emailed Alex Trebek to see if he could do that bit with me, but, um... Guys, I have some bad news. Huh. So this video on its face is not that ridiculous, but it is like promoting bioessentialism. It's also kind of appealing to the idea that people already believe this in some sense. This all feeds into my grand theory that Jordan Peterson is a political theorist for dudes that say common sense in arguments. How do you know that? Oh, common sense. Is that a sociological journal or can we throw out everything you said for the last hour? But really what bugs me about this clip is that everything he's saying here is very obviously linked to patriarchy, toxic masculinity, gendered expectations, race, class, and he just ends up saying, of it. He clips this small part where he skims the surface of the subject and conveniently uploads a clip that avoids the much more interesting causes. And that's a part of why these short form videos are so dangerous. They are not only deprived of their context, but they're cut in a way that allows only the most ear grabbing, repeatable talking topics through. They're also awfully convenient, both ideologically and in terms of consuming. Them. Girls are soft mean, boys are hard mean is a very simple concept. So clipping it and putting it into a video void of any contextual information or analysis allows allows it to reinforce the beliefs of people who already believe that sort of thing as a default, who refuse to do any cultural or social analysis as to the cause or meaning of these things. And Jordan Peterson isn't talking about trans people here, but it's implicit that whenever Jordan Peterson says something, he's probably being transphobic in some sense. So what I'll say is that this biological essentialism can be used, this rhetoric can be used to say that trans women like myself are inherently violent or dangerous around women. That's just something to keep in mind. emptiness in your life isn't because you don't have enough rights. 
You have all the rights there are. You have more than you should. And it isn't because you lack consumerist options. You have Amazon and pornography, man. You can get whatever you want whenever you want it. And if that's still not working... Wait, uh, wait, I, I could be watching porn right now. Wait, I gotta go. Guys, wait, I gotta end the video. Hey, not to brag, man, but earlier today I watched porn. Are you serious? You, you go to hell if you watch porn, right? Wait, what? Well, what are you missing? Well, maybe you're missing the opposite of that. A little bit of restraint. A little bit of sacrifice, some responsibility. So this one really cuts to the core of the Jordan Peterson ideology. First of all, he presupposes that you have all of the rights that you deserve and more, which is definitely not true for a lot of people. For myself, a trans woman of color, I absolutely perceive a different truth than that one, but also for poor people, for disabled people, for people living in other countries, the global south. Peterson immediately preaches to an audience as though there is a normative base level of rights that everyone has already exceeded. And past that, he says that the solutions to your problems lie solely in responsibility self-discipline, and restraint. This allows him to, in one video, both state that systemic oppression, stripping of rights, etc., those are a non-issue, and that the true issue is that you aren't working hard enough. A lot of Jordan Peterson fans will say that he's not a conservative, or that he's not right-wing, but this is a video that really makes it clear that he is a right-wing political figure. It is the exact position of the conservative movement of the United States. You're not oppressed. You just gotta grind. <laughs> Go hard in the paint. Start a small business with conflict mineral money. Do jumping jacks. Enlist in the Air Force and fly into the ocean. You know, just focus on you. And the problem with this ideology is it doesn't allow you to fly a plane into the ocean and, and die. I've always said that it's important to get your money up because when you're broke, yeah, you have no money. <laughs> I've seen the climate apocalypse use fear to induce something approximating the same kind of level of tyranny, as far as I'm concerned, that characterized the, the vaccine lockdown. Help me sort that out and, and understand where you stand. I see the, these huge levels of depression and despair, uh, loneliness in kids, and I don't think that there's a single cause to it. Um, and I think blaming it on, you know, depression about climate is probably over simplistic. And in fact, I think a lot of the problems we see in kids, and particularly boys, it's probably underappreciated um, that uh, how much of that is coming from chemical exposures, including a lot of the sexual dysphoria that we're seeing. They, I mean, they're swimming through a soup of toxic chemicals today, and many of those are endocrine disruptors. Okay, Robert F. Kennedy jump scare. First of all, that guy looks a thousand years old. I'm pretty sure he was built in a lab during the Great Depression. If you don't know him, this guy is the 70-year-old anti-vax Democratic candidate that really makes you think, what is the Democratic Party, right? Just a retirement home for James Bond villains? Every Democratic candidate is either or Pontius Pilate, or the first queer woman figure skater to kill civilians in Grenada. Go girly, get your murder on. So Jordan Peterson has range, and I think a lot of his strength lies in his abilities to advertise ideas to people in forms that seem almost ridiculous. They grab your attention. I initially thought everything in this video is ridiculous, and they were maybe thinking of the Joker's origin story, where he fell into chemicals and became the enemy of the Batman. But then I researched it, and some of it is actually true. Yeah, there seems to be a connection, possibly, between uh, endocrine disruptors and major depressive disorders. Order. But when you research the causes of increased rates of depression in the modern age, you get different things. Contemporary populations may now be more susceptible to depression because of greater inequality, low social support, intense individual competitiveness, and increased social failure. Onset of a major depressive episode often coincides with stressful life events. Modern populations are increasingly overfed, malnourished, sedentary, sunlight deficient, sleep deprived, and socially isolated. These changes in lifestyles each contribute to poor physical health and affect the incidence and treatment of depression. So it's weird for Jordan Peterson to upload a video called Why Are Young Boys Depressed and to lead with COVID lockdown tyranny, climate apocalypse, and then pivot into endocrine disruptors when there are just a ridiculous amount of compounding factors that seem to lead to depression. That study that I just referenced that I will link in the description, in fact, does mention endocrine disruption quite a few times in relation to diet, sunlight, sleep, and the mentioned environmental toxins, but those are just smaller parts that make up a huge array of factors. So Jordan Peterson is able to upload this video, pose a question, pretend to answer it, and tell a little half-truth that sounds interesting but really is just a small part of the story. Now, I'm sure the full interview between between them goes into more detail, but once again, this is short form content. This is what we're analyzing. We're literally just looking at a video form of a pull quote. At first, I also couldn't tell what he meant by sexual dysmorphia here until I looked up Robert F. Kennedy sexual dysmorphia and found out that he thinks that chemicals in the water are impacting the sexuality of children. And Jordan Peterson is just 
uploading this, I guess. CNN spoke to multiple experts who said there is no link between endocrine disruptors and children's gender and sexuality. While sex in frogs is determined by environmental factors such as temperature and chemicals, Dr. Andrea Gore, professor of pharmacology and toxicology at University of Texas at Austin, said the sex of humans is determined at the moment of conception and cannot later be altered by endocrine disrupting chemicals. If this conspiracy theory sounds familiar, it's literally the Alex Jones turning the frogs gay talking point. Like, I'm dead serious. That's what it is. That's what Jordan Peterson is implicitly endorsing here. And because it's so short form, because it comes at you so quickly and you don't have time to sort of analyze or understand what they're saying, this can totally go over your head. You might not even understand what you're seeing. You've seen the half truths that Jordan Peterson loves to tell, and you've seen how short form content can strip even the most basic things of their context and render them incoherent. So let's wrap this thing up. So when we look at these videos, we need to consider two things. One, what is being said? Is it true on its face? So a direct appraisal of the content, and then two, why is it being said? What framework is Peterson building or strengthening or alluding to when he says these things? It's a dual structure because it's in this especially heavily curated format. He's advertising his worldview, which of course, as many people have pointed out, is one that is particularly enticing to directionless young men who are struggling to understand why they are suffering in an ever-changing world. But when I show you these videos of Jordan Peterson being a little bit dishonest or weird, I'm also conveniently holding information from you, particularly the information that a lot of these videos are inoffensive and even true or insightful. A lot of the most popular videos on shorts when you look up Jordan Peterson are people telling him how he has changed their life and helped them on their way. Combine that with the more approachable informational content said in an academic tone he puts out, and he can suck people in with that way of thinking and pivot to this barely true nonsense. Which is why it's important for me and you to always be a little bit critical of the sound bites and videos we hear on a day-to-day -day basis which is why I'm so glad that this video is sponsored by True Media. True Media? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, this video is actually sponsored by my wonderful patrons over at patreon.com slash uh, who literally make all of my videos possible, financially viable. They support my life. So if you like what I'm doing, if you like this video, go over there and toss me a few bones, a few bucks and bones if you wanna. But otherwise, that's all I wanted to say for this video. I hope that you got a little bit of entertainment from it, that maybe you laughed or learned something or got a little bit of context as to how to do debate these ideas if somebody brings them up to you. Um, otherwise, have a lovely day, take care of yourself, take care of others, be kind to yourself and others, unless they're Canadian psychology professor Jordan Peterson. Uh, and as always, thank you for watching. Mwah. Bye.